Do you know that the definition of fear is taking belief that something is a threat towards you? So you're taking belief in something you can't see every day. Wow. But what you're doing right now is choosing to one, believe in something you can't see, but you're choosing fear. And in return, you're getting insecure and you're having to struggle with something wow. that was actually always intended to be your strength, but now the enemy's put on that your weakness. But if you would just choose faith, your whole story changes. If you just choose to believe in God, the same thing that you cannot see, wow. then you're all of a sudden and confident in something that the enemy put on you as your weakness, but it's actually your weapon of strength. And it was just this moment that he was just like. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what the giant is. God doesn't want you to lose heart. And this is the plan of the enemy, right, Sadie? The first thing he wants to do is steal our hope. And he tells us, you'll never change. Yeah. It's never going to be different. Yeah. It's always going to be this way. Did you ever bump up against that in your struggle as well? Oh, absolutely. And I think that sometimes it's like you get discouraged when it doesn't change. And that's another thing that the enemy will use is like that discouragement of like it happened again or like, oh, yeah. you're still facing it. And then you get to that point and feeling like defeated and you lose that hope. And yeah. that's essential. I think um, for me, I remember one time I was so upset because I thought I had like, I was free of fear and I like, it happened again. Like I got so afraid and like I started getting so anxious about something. And I remember I immediately started praying, but I was praying this prayer that like God would fix this situation around me. And I remember like very clearly just God really speaking to my heart in this moment of like, kind of notice how you're praying because the minute you yeah, stop yeah. praying for your circumstances to change and you just start praying for your heart to change, wow. that's when everything's wow. going to start happening for you. Because when you pray for your circumstances to change, you get discouraged when they're not changing. But when you stop and you pray for your heart to change, understanding that that's the real change, like he will defeat yeah. the giant, it, he must fall. In those moments, you realize that even though you're in the same circumstance, the same situation you've always been in, that's when you have peace that surprises all understanding and that's when you have this confidence that doesn't even make sense because that's when God comes and fights on your behalf yes. and, that yes. is yeah. and that's the message yeah. that is our message and that's the message that we're trying to actually get across tonight is that God is fighting yes, for you that's so, good. so right after David says don't let anyone lose heart he says you know this is going to go down this guy's going down yeah. today and they looked at David and they said how are you going to do that look at you you're 14 years old <laughs> And he says, when I was keeping my dad's sheep yeah. and a lion came, I turned, I <laughs> struck that lion, I rescued that sheep from its mouth, I killed yeah. that lion and I've killed a bear. And you would think he's saying, so that's my resume mm -hmm. and that's why I'm gonna kill this giant. But the next line is the, lion, the line that I love. He says, and the same God mm -hmm. who gave me the power yeah. <laughs> to kill the lion and the bear is yeah. gonna take down this Philistine Ooh, giant good. today. So yeah. he was saying, it's not David that's gonna take him down, yeah. it's that same power of God. And that's true for you today. Yes. God is fighting for you. And he's not looking for you to, you know, to, to hulk up and become a superhero. He's mm -hmm. looking for you to wake up today and look yeah. up and realize there's a giant slayer in your story today. Mm -hmm. And he is bigger than whatever you are facing. And Sadie and I are not minimizing the giants. I love that. We're not minimizing the danger of a giant. And for me, it was anxiety. And I tell people all the time, Sadie, that was eight years ago when I was in a pit for months out of commission. And here I am by the grace of God, and yeah. here you are by the grace of God. Look, here's two people by the grace of God who are saying today, Jesus is bigger than whatever you are facing in yeah. your life. He is bigger than the giant. But people say, well, what's it like for you now? And then I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I say, anxiety is still in my story. Yeah. It's not right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're sitting in Atlanta, Georgia right now. It's probably like on the outskirts of the city somewhere over there, <laughs> but I know what it is, yeah. and I know how to fight it. Mm. And when it starts coming my way, so I know good. it's not gonna kill me, and I know it's not gonna take me out, because I yes. know Jesus has already defeated it, and so I can good. walk in what Jesus so has good. already done for me. So you're 20, I've said that three times already, but I think it's amazing that God has raised you up, Sadie, and you have a lot of, a lot of confidence and a lot of wisdom and I love the way you boldly speak about Jesus everywhere you go. And if someone's watching right now that is 20 and they're in that place, maybe not even able to go to work, mm -hmm. uh, not able to go to school, 
not functioning in life, or maybe you're older than 20, but you're in that same space. What, what would you say, or how could you just encourage somebody watching right now that God is going to make a way for them? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, it's funny um, that you said that. I think one of the biggest things that I would say to any 20-year-old or any really anybody is that you got to believe he's fighting for you. You got to believe he is for you. And in your weakness, he will be your strength. And it's actually kind of funny that you said the two words, you said confidence and wisdom. Because honestly, like in high school, I was like not very smart. Like school smart, not my thing, okay? Just being completely honest. Confidence was not my thing either. I was very insecure, very shy. My teachers like asked my mom if I even talked. That's not a joke. So like major, this was my weakness, but because of the grace of yeah. God, because God is so good. He is so strong in your weakest years and that's what you have to embrace because when you embrace that and just let him be him, it's so fun to get to walk around and like say things that you're like, how in the world, if it was not God, how could I possibly Absolutely. do that? Because it's so out of my nature, but it's just who he is. And when he's fighting for you, there's just no limits to what you can do. But I would encourage you by this because I actually was talking to an, a 20 year old um, recently and this moment was kind of a David and Goliath moment for him. Um, we were talking and it was so random. My friend had set this little conversation up because she said, you got to talk to my friend. He's been a Christian all his life and he just recently just said that he's an atheist. He doesn't believe anymore. He's done with it. Wow. And she said, can you talk to him? And I was like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so I go and I sit with this guy, he's the same age as me. And I just kind of start talking to him, just really asking his story. What's, what's his life about? And, um, I noticed that he had a little bit of a different accent, but he was like the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. I'm not kidding. Like using big words and back to the whole high school thing. I was like, Whoa. So it was like really cool. Okay. So I was like, God, you're really going to have to do work in this. So I'm talking to him and he's so smart and all this stuff. And Eventually, I just said, okay, so why not God? And he goes, well, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm mad. He said, I'm mad at God. He said, because, you know, my whole life, I grew up and I was deaf. I couldn't hear at all. And I would just pray for this miracle to happen. I just thought if I could just hear, it would all be fine. He said, then I got my miracle and I had this surgery and I can hear now. But as soon as I began to speak, I noticed that I'm talking different than everybody else. And every single day because of that, I have to live with the insecurity of that, of what others think of me. I have to live in the fear of what others think of me. And I just can't do it anymore. And he said, I don't even want to do it anymore. And I'm just, I'm just done. And then I said, wow, you know, I, I did not see that coming. I didn't know that about your story. And I said, um, is that it? Is that the reason why? Because if you're just mad at God, do you really not believe in him? And he said, I mean, honestly, too, I just couldn't believe in a God that I can't see. How could I take belief in something I can't see? And why would I if I was going to be mad at him anyways? I said, okay. And I sat there, and immediately it just hit me. Because this whole time I've been sitting here talking to this guy, and I'm thinking, like, he's so smart. His words are clearly his strength, his way that he talks. And I said, isn't it interesting that I'm sitting here this whole time hearing how smart you are and thinking your words are your strength, and you, you say that your speech is your weakness. Wow. Interesting fact. Then we kind of start talking about that. And then I say, and didn't you say that you're afraid every day of your life? He said, yeah. I said, do you know that the definition of fear is taking belief that something is a threat towards you? So you're taking belief in something you can't see every day. Wow. But what you're doing right now is choosing to, one, believe in something you can't see, but you're choosing fear. And in return, you're getting insecure, and you're having to struggle with something wow. that was actually always intended to be your strength, but now the enemy's put on that your weakness. But if you would just choose faith, your whole story changes. If you just choose to believe in God, the same thing that you cannot see, wow. then you're all of a sudden confident in something that the enemy put on you as your weakness, but it's actually your weapon of strength. And it was just this moment that he was just like, <laughs> and I was wow. actually kind of like, wow. And we sat there and I was like, isn't that something that the enemy will put something in your face and define to as your weakness all your life? And you'll believe it and you'll sit in it and you'll be afraid. But the minute you just say, no, not my God, he is so much bigger and yeah. he will be my strength and my weakness. All of a sudden you get up and the very thing that's been holding you back all your life is now the very thing that you talk about, that you're confident about. Look at Live Fearless. That's the thing that held me in a pit for three years. Now it's the very thing 
thing I talk about to people all over the world. That is who our God is, and that's what he wants to do in your life. All you got to do is choose to believe in faith over believing in fear. So great. And it just so great. Life. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.